This episode of the Decent Dads Podcast is brought to you by our good friends over at Five Pound Apparel. Five Pound Apparel is a premier apparel and goods company selling products that benefit people all over the world. Mm-hmm. Their products are handmade with love and can't be found anywhere else. And the cool thing about Five Pound Apparel is everything they sell has been handpicked or designed by their team to benefit someone specifically somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Um, and with Father's Day right around the corner, we've partnered with Five Pound to give our listeners a special discount code uh, worth 15% off their next yeah. purchase. Um, just use code DECENTDADS15 at time of purchase. Uh, that's Decent Dads, all one word, spelled D E C E N T D A. DS15. One five. One five. Personally, I'm a big fan uh, of Five Pound in general. I was already wearing one of their hats today when they asked <laughs> us to do this, um, and most of my t shirts are also Five Pound. So we're very excited to be partnering with them. Big fans. Um, honestly, just thanks so much, Five Pound, for agreeing to support the Decent Dads podcast. Hey, y'all. My name is Bryant Young. And Derek Cheney. Here with the Decent Dads Podcast. Brand new episode this week. That's right. We had a good one. We uh, got a guy on the podcast that's been inside Bryant. Good Lord. That's how we're starting this show. That's how we're starting the show. Yeah, my dentist was on the show today, (laughs) Dr. Tom Hoff. Um, We talked about it while he had his hands in my mouth, and we invited him on the show. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy this one. Yeah. Um, He's our first doctor. First doctor, uh, first uh, a few things there. I mean, he's he has a um, you know a biological traditional uh, child, adopted child, surrogate child. So I mean, mm-hmm. he covers all the bases there. We talked a lot about that. Uh, talked talked a lot about you know various things there as far as we covered bullying, we covered pets. I mean, yeah, we covered a lot of stuff with him. It was, it was a broad series of topics. So I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. So uh, I think we just jump right into this, dude. Let's do it. All right, decent dads podcast. Here we go. Good evening, folks, and welcome back to the Decent Dads Podcast. We're here to tell dad jokes, drink coffee, and build a community of dads navigating fatherhood together. I'm Bryant Young, fearless leader, co-host, girl dad, and your friendly local insurance agent based out of Springfield, Missouri. And now, before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he's a six foot three junior shooting guard from small town Missouri. He wishes he was a first team All-American, but again, he's not. Instead, he's the coolest co-host with the most, the fantastic father of two, and the home loan expert. Folks, put your hands together and welcome the incomparable Mr. Derek Cheney. Right, How right. are you, Derek? Still trying, man. Still, Still trying. trying. Uh, You'll get there one day, big right. boy. That's right. No, no, doing good. Doing good. You know, it's a good day for a good day. It's a good day. Got uh, got hoppy coffee in hand. Back at it again. Got another great guest. I mm-hmm. uh, got, uh, got Tom Hoff on, our first... Dr. Tom. Yes, sir. Dentist. So he's going to share all the all the secrets on how to get your kids to... Uh, to so so do teeth. I make the joke about if somebody has a heart attack, still call a real doctor? Absolutely. Is that- <laughs> absolutely. I mean, there's more jokes. You can lean into that if you want to. I'm not sure if we want to do this on the, this podcast, but we've all seen the movie. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I would say, uh, yeah. Glad you're here, man. Thanks Thank for being you. here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Podcast. Excited. Excited to have you. Excited to hear your stories. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't know you very well, Tom. Mm-hmm. Brian knows you a little bit. Yeah. So He's you, my dentist. He's had his hands in my mouth. <laughs> yes, I, uh, love, I love being in his Even mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew we were going to have yeah, some this of these. This is going to be good. You were going to team me out. <laughs> yeah, I'm this here for you, good. buddy. You did. This is going to be a good episode. <laughs> yeah. I can already tell. I can already tell. But Tom, if you will, tell us you know, who you are, <laughs> what you do. Give us your dad resume. Tell us how many kids you got, what are their ages, which one's your favorite, and we'll just go from there. Absolutely. So I, I got to start. Doctor. Tom Hoff. That's and, right. You know, I, I've got to be referred to as that. <laughs> got to. We'll, we'll make got a note. To. Make okay. a note. Make From a note on your paper. Out. I got from it here. Uh, just Tom. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Hey, I, I've got three kids. Uh, Blake, Bo, Britton. Mm-hmm. Nine, four, and five. Uh, I refer to my three assholes. They're yeah. awesome. Uh, They're awesome. <laughs> yeah. They are. They're asshole kids, and we love them. I In the best way possible. Right. The best way possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got... Uh, Blake rides horses. Bo plays hockey. Britton is my girly girl. She yeah. dances, does gymnastics, and I'm just living life. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Well, and and I happen to know that that you have 
a, an, an interesting way, not an interesting way, but a different way than some of our other dads to getting to fatherhood with each of your kids. So talk a little bit about that just so we can kind of let people know where you're coming from here. Yeah, so we went the unconventional route. Uh, fertility issues, Blake, we'll call her a test tube baby, mm -hmm. I mean, for lack of better terms. Yeah, IVF. Uh, IVF, uh, all natural. Bo, um, we adopted him, you know, at two days. We've had him since he's two days. That's we, so cool. You know, let's take a turn for the, the negative here. He was born addicted to meth. He's thriving now, but oh, um, awesome. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I mean it's a sad story, but he hits life lottery ticket. I yeah, mean, that's kind of how it was. Britt uh, had her through surrogacy, had to adopt her out of Alabama, but you know we had her through surrogacy. I mean she, yeah, she's ours, right. but um, I mean it's just it's been a whirlwind. It really yeah, has. Uh, but it, it, what what a great experience. I mean I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, I love that. So yeah, four, five, and nine. So the surrogate thing, you are one of the only people I know that has gone through that. Are there some other local folks that you kind of commiserated with or, or kind of talked to about no, that? Or No, not at all. Like, we don't know anybody. In, we tried a couple different, we'll call them just farm clubs, if you will, mm -hmm. in Springfield. And we struck out. And so we went through Alabama and, you know, we had found the surrogate, kind of fell in love with her. Um, she got on board. And, I mean, it's all in the up and up where – Sure. Um, you know, we've all seen Blindside, right? So, yeah. I mean, you literally you get to pick like, hey, mom's six foot two. You know, we, we see <laughs> we see the genetics, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's how we did it. And, Interesting. And, I mean, Thanks. to a certain degree. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was it was perfect. What do you? Yeah, that's that's just so unique because you definitely the first. Well, obviously, Dennis, we've had on the show, but also, I the the, the surrogacy, surrogacy thing is something that's kind of a rarefied air yeah. around here. So that is cool. It really is. I mean, it's just how much do you want the third kid, right? Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And that's what it was. I and mean, we were passionate about having the third kid. Um, we didn't see any other way of getting to that end goal, mm -hmm. and so that's what we had to do, and we did it. And um, you know, obviously, she's a blessing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, there, there's some hurdles to jump through. Uh, some tough conversations on the back end oh, I bet. You know, that we're going to sure. have with Britain because she doesn't know yeah. what, what n nor does Bo to a certain degree. Um, so, not to be too serious about it. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to have some tough conversations, and that, that's part of it. That's part of the mystique. And um, but I mean, she's going to want to know about her genetics and things yeah. like that. But you guys love her all the same, and, and and she'll know that. When yes. the time comes, it'll yeah. like you said, it'll be a tough conversation, but yeah. she'll know that nonetheless. I'll have season tickets to the WNBA, I'm sure. That's there right. Go. <laughs> He's yeah, like, we didn't really great. pay attention to genetics, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. we kind of. She's going to be seven foot twelve, <laughs> and that's what we're going seven for. Seven foot twelve runs a four two forty. So yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Thing. Well, and, and I mentioned earlier that that you were my dentist, and and part part of the way that we got you on the show was that you and I were talking well you were talking um you also have your hands in my mouth so it's kind of hard for me yeah. to talk back but we were kind of talking about the show a little bit and then i got home from dennis that night and derek was coming over to record an episode and i was like well i was talking to my dentist about it and he looks at me and goes well did you ask him if he wanted to be on i was like well shit no i didn't <laughs> we should definitely do that and i sent right. you a text like the next day and i was like oh yeah, that would have made way more sense. Why didn't I think of that? A little easier, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> it completely we got flattered. Hard. I was like, yeah. yes, absolutely. First podcast. How do I awesome. make my way to Joe Rogan? Like, exactly. Hey, this is your first step. This is your first step. Okay. Okay. Podcast ladder. Okay. Exactly. How do you eat an elephant one <laughs> yeah. piece at a time, baby? <laughs> right. So you got three kids. Three kids. Inevitably, you're going to have tantrums with each of those kids. So let's do mm. our let's do our tantrum of the day deal. What uh, what kind of stuff you've been dealing with lately, tantrum wise? Anything crazy? Yes. So absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to be definitive answer. Yes, yeah. I am. I, the, the two are what 14, 15 months apart, Bo and Britain, right. and. Both can wipe their ass themselves, but it's how thoroughly, right? So Britain, <laughs> Bo is good about it. Britain is not. So uh, the tantrum is, she'll ask, she'll, hey, daddy, hey, I need to be wiped, right? You know, with poop or pee. Yeah. And so now I'm coming in. She's like, I don't want, I don't want any part. No, I'll do it. I just need you to make sure that supervise, uh, supervise. <laughs> It's like, hey, daddy, not, we're like, let's let's close the door. I'm not supposed to be doing this. So I walk out of the door. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it. So I come in. I help her out. And so I've got a toilet roll spinner that is off of the, the studs at this point because yeah. she has ripped it off the studs. So we had, a we had a complete meltdown. This was two weeks ago. 
And so, I, I mean, I can't get anybody to fix it. But yeah, this was the meltdown. She ripped the freaking the, toilet paper roll off the, the thing. Because damn. she didn't want to wipe her own ass. Dang. And I, I mean, <laughs> Little that, Hulk that, baby. And she, yeah. she is the boss. At this point, is that that's the move, huh? That's the move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love she it. She might have some anger issues. She sounds like my little one. Um, is that what you're dealing with this week? Well, some I mean, little man he anger just, issues. He, he just he has a little temper on him. Well, I know that. And, but his thing is, is, like, yeah, he'll go over to the toilet paper holder and just hit it and just spin that thing till. And I didn't see it, so full. I don't know if it was like she was leaning on it just to get a little comfort, mm. or. But yeah, I mean, it's. I've got one side that's out of the side, so um, we're replacing drywall at this point. Let's yeah, gotta love yeah, that. What know. about you, DC? What are you dealing with? Yeah, well, speaking of my my little guy, <clears throat> um, so uh, bedtime routine. We have the same routine every night: read three books, sing three songs, prayers, affirmations, go to bed. Right. Uh, well, Brody, uh, he's smart enough now. Picked up on that. Uh, typically, the last song we always sing is "You Are My Sunshine." Mm-hmm. Okay. And he realizes that's the last song before he has to be put to bed. Uh, and starting so, starting to understand the routine. Yep, yep. He's getting there. And so um, the other night, I was I was getting you know doing the whole routine, uh, and we got to the last song, and I just got like the first two words out. I was like, "You are," and he just starts losing it. He's like, "Ah, no, no, no!" Like that's all. He can't say many words, you know. But uh, but knows what I'm. He just starts <laughs> losing it, and so I'm like. Okay, all right then. And so yeah, I was like, well, you know, what's the next go-to? ABCs, right? So he started singing that. He's perfectly fine. Just chill, mellowed, mellowed out. But uh, but now, anytime we sing You Are My Sunshine, doesn't matter if it's bedtime routine or if it's the middle of the day, he just don't, gets pissed. Don't sing me that song, and Dad. And loses it. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, he has a temper, man, and uh, I don't really know where that came from, but, uh, but we've learned not to sing that song to Brody. <laughs> So it's all, it's off the table, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for be. him, his, mean, his brother doesn't, or if like, and that's the thing too. If we're singing it to his brother, to Liam, he's fine. He doesn't care. But if you're looking at him singing singing the song to him, mm-mm. against the rules, he's not he's not having. So, well, and it's and there's eight thousand little kid songs, so it won't be too hard to replace that. Oh, but right. it is one of those deals. Where it's like, how the hell is that the one right? thing? But that I mean, sets you off. You know how you are. You just get in your routines. And you're just so used to doing the same thing over and over again. And, and like, the second anything changes, you right? have a you're minor like, <laughs> like cardiac infarction. And, and that's totally. Do you have a bedtime routine? With oh your yeah, kids? oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all do, and like you can't. There's no misstep. Mm-hmm. It has to right. Right down the list. And, so, and, if, something, one of them. and yep. if something does get off, then at 2 a.m., I'm getting yelled at yeah, by a absolutely. kid. Absolutely. Yep. And so, oh, why didn't you finish the story? Because I read <laughs> Great Green Moon to each of the kids, and I just we, we've done it all the time. Yeah. But Blake, my oldest, like a little different scenario than Britain. You got to kind of snuggle Britain. Bo, he goes down immediately. So, you know, you do the whole Great Green Room. And he's like, you know, as soon as you walk out the door, he's like, hey, you know, I'll see you in the morning. That's his thing. But all the kids get the same story. But if you stray one bit, mm-hmm. yeah, they're a the topster's daddy. I'm like, <laughs> go to bed. What did I forget? Go to bed, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. What did I leave hey, out? What, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, Brian? What speaking you of, <laughs> of routines, um, we go bath, pajamas, bottle read and that's that's okay. our order yeah. and so or milk read we're trying to get away from the bottle it's the only one she gets at the end of the day and it, it's about time to be done with it but that's another hurdle we got to overcome but i'm taking off her diaper to put her in the tub and she loses it and i can't figure out what's going on i've i've set her down take her diaper off and then set her back and i'm kind of rolling it up and throwing it in the trash can and she's losing it set her in the tub turn on the water still losing it <laughs> squirt some bubbles in there because that's like the thing right? that sometimes gets her excited still losing it can't figure it out and she's kind of mumbling diaper 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 she's yelling diaper at me yeah she wanted to play with the diaper and i was not allowing her to play with the dirty <laughs> with diaper. the dirty diaper that's correct that's <laughs> yeah. correct she wanted to play with her little wet diaper oh. and i was like no dude we're not doing no. this absolutely not didn't matter there was no overcoming it it finally i mean it lasted from the beginning of bath time until I handed her to live to do like the final. Okay, time wow. to read the books and go to bed. It was twenty five minutes, wow. just screaming her brains out for absolutely no reason. Get that kid some toys. Quit letting her play <laughs> dirty like, diapers. You've been upstairs. Yeah. There's a thousand of them up there. I get need. Her, I need less toys. Get her the clean diaper that'll explode when it gets in water. You know, it just <laughs> swells. That's true. 
Yeah. That, that yeah, that would have been the play there. Actually, that's a good right. point. And we're doing we're doing swim lessons right now too. So we've got the uh, the the swim diapers too. So there you go. Could have had a little more creative solution, but I was just completely surprised that Messed my daughter up your was routine, man. Messed up your routine. So infatuated happened. with playing with a freaking wet diaper. So yeah. story of my life. Well, Doctor Tom, we do. Uh, <laughs> Just Tom. <laughs> Just Tom. Okay. Okay. Tom. <laughs> we do another thing every every episode, and uh, we always get everybody's best. Dad hack alert! <laughs> Dad hack. Perfect. There we go. Right. Yeah. We insert some audio later. Um. And uh. <laughs> and so. You know, uh, we'll have you tell us your best dad hack, or maybe best dad advice, if you don't have a good good dad hack. Dad hack. I- I don't know. That's a tough one. Uh, my des- best dad advice. We'll take that. We like those yep. better anyway. You know, I, I think getting on their level. I mean, I, I like I, that. I know it's okay. serious, but like anytime they want something or demand something or just want to converse, I mean, it, if you kneel and get on their level, it goes such a long way. Cool. Mm-hmm. I know yeah. it's serious. It's probably not what you guys want. No, we no, like no, serious. Really, no, it, trust me. It really me. does. Like, all the kids that they respond to, even my dental practice, if you if you have a kid that it doesn't want to be there, which mm. is ninety percent of the kids, sure. If you somehow can get on their level, whether it's a toy or yeah, the treasure chest, I mean, if you come down to their level, yeah, they love it. Like that and, a lot. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's a security blanket type of thing, but it works with my kids. It works with the majority of the the, the kids in the dental office, mm-hmm. and. I don't, and you see it, and you witness it. You see a lot of parents just like, well, you know, trying to communicate with their kid from thirty-five thousand feet, right? Yeah, right. six on feet the grand, in the air. Yeah, on, on a granular level, they just get to their level. Yeah, I mean, I think it changes the game. That's really yeah. cool, and that's what I try to do. Yeah, it doesn't work all the time, but. But sir, I, I certainly think it helps because yeah, I've experienced that myself yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, I really yeah. like that, and. Full disclosure, we like the serious ones. We mm-hmm. talk about yeah, the serious absolutely. ones a lot. Yeah. We, we like that because, frankly, he and I are better dads because of this show. Because we get to steal everybody's dad Getting eggs better. and dad Getting advice. Better, yeah. yeah, like like we, I mean, we have taken so much of them just from the show. It's like, yeah, well, I'm putting that in my life and I'm putting that in my life because it's going to make right. it easier for me. Yep. And, I mean, so, for example, if the kid's yelling at me from the couch, which Bo does, like if we're watching TV in the evening and I'm my island is just over here the couch is over here you know he's yelling something i mean legos or i want this or i want that (laughs) you go and like just plop down on the couch with him get to his level i mean it just changed the whole demeanor of the conversation yeah that's that's my hack that's awesome i like that i think it's just so much less intimidating for him right who's even think it as an adult right if some seven foot big dude came in and tried talking to us yeah i don't like talking to max too, right? buto when he's as tall as he yeah, is just because yeah. it makes me feel like a little so, kid i actually so, yeah, like no, I, I like that a lot too i mean <laughs> or you don't want greg talking to you, <laughs> yeah. down to you well, yeah. right? big greg you want him on your lap yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and fortunately these days i get to look down on him so it's that much so better you know that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you brian uh so mine's actually a little somber today i'm afraid oh, okay. um we had to put my dog down this afternoon hmm. i'm sorry Bad deal. Um, I've had her for 11 years. Super sad. Um, Renal failure. Bad deal. She was losing weight. We took her to the vet this afternoon, and I thought it was something wrong with her teeth because she wasn't eating super well. And so Liv took her to the vet, and neither of us were prepared excuse me, for the uh, the news that we got. But we ended up having to put her down. It was the right thing to do. But um, that dog was kind of my first introduction to parenting, and Mm -hmm. so there was a little bit of that, like, extra loss there because like I had never had a dog before I got that dog when I was 23 years old right when I moved to town and then now 11 years later but um, I say all of that to say Liv and I were talking about okay so Elsie's almost two she probably won't remember this dog in six months hopefully I mean she will and she might ask about Faye but how do we have that kind of conversation with Elsie about well, where's Faye? Because right. yeah. her her uh, her thing is, Dad, where are you? She can see you. She just wants to know where you are. Right. She can hear you. She just wants to know where you are. So that's her thing. Well, we come in to the house and she immediately the first thing she says, Faye, where are you? It's oh like, shit! Yeah, that's God. Tough. But Liv and I were talking about it, and Liv made a really really good point, and and I think this could work for folks with a little bit older kids in particular. Just tell the kids that the dog has has died has passed away has has gone away don't tell them 
that the dog went to sleep. Right. Don't yeah. tell them that the dog um, went bye bye, or or anything. Any of those words that you use on a daily basis. Don't lie to them basically. because yeah. then it's going to scare the shit out of them for those normal yeah. things. Oh, we say, okay, yeah. it's time to yeah. go to sleep. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, my dog's gone when he went to sleep. <laughs> right? So, yeah. so Dang. what are we gonna do? So, Liv made that point, and I was like, "Damn, that's actually okay. Yeah, that's a really good point." And I'm gonna heartlessly steal that tonight for the podcast because, as much as I don't want to talk about my dog dying, I thought that was a really good idea that to is. avoid some of those like day to day things. And basically, this is my way of saying my wife is a genius and I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, so I get to lean on her advice all the time. Yep. She sounds like a saint. Yeah, yeah, she is very much so. So, Dang. yeah, that was that was my piece of somber dad advice today. Yeah. Uh, well, my, it was actually a mom hack, to yeah. be clear. Liv came <laughs> up with that. At least you're giving her credit. Mm-hmm. No, mine's a, mine's a little different uh, this week, too. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't actually have a dad hack or dad advice. I'm actually uh, searching for some, some dad advice, advice here. Soliciting advice. I like it. Um, so last night, you guys know, we had a pretty big thunderstorm here. Mm-hmm. Um, and my oldest, Liam, he it terrified him because it, really? it, it hit right during bedtime, right? Normally, he goes down to bed at 8. He didn't go to sleep till like 10, 30, 11 last night. Yeah, poor and, kid. And every time it would it would hit, you know, he would he'd get all worked up. And so we'd have to go in there, calm him down. And, you know, we, we tried everything, too. We tried, like, taking him out of his room and, you know, showing him out the window. Like, look, you know, it's just thunder. It can't hurt you. It's just a sound. That didn't work. We tried, you know, singing songs to take his mind off of it. That didn't work. I mean, I even tried, like, playing a little game with him. Like, every time we'd hear it thunder, we'd be like, shoot, thunder, go away, you know. And he, yeah, yeah. And he would say that, yeah. too. And he would, like, giggle after it. So I'm like, all right, I'm, this is working, right? And then as soon as I get ready to leave the room, he would just get upset and be like, dad, don't leave. Stay with me. You know, just pulling at the, the, the heartstrings mm-hmm. there, you know. And so, yeah, so I'm looking for some dad advice, or maybe you guys have some here, too, on how do you um, teach your kids to be okay with, you know, thunder or, or maybe other loud sounds you like that. that at all? Yeah, I have. So I, I think I'm in a, a lucky spot. So my next door neighbor, Tyler Thompson, I, mm-hmm. I think I can say that on air. Mm-hmm. So he was a former Greene County storm chaser. And we got into this conversation, and Blake was out there. And Blake, my older one, is terrified of storms. So at that point, I don't know, I just got, had this, like, you know, I need to explain this to her that, you know, it, Tyler was telling me, and she was kind of inquisitive about it. So every time a storm comes up, I was like, hey, look, if you have any questions, we'll text Mr. Tyler next door. And he Perfect. can tell he's got the radar. He can tell us if oh, anything's coming nice. in. I'm not saying lie to your kids, but maybe you, maybe you come up with a story like, "Hey, look, you know, I'll, let me text Mr. Bryant," and you know, yeah. So and that's what I do, and so she will literally come downstairs. Hey, can you text Mr. Thompson to see, you know, is there a storm coming in? What are the winds like? And he will, and I'll show it to her because she can remember. Like, right, hey, sure. it says right here. I mean, he's got the radar, and everything looks good, sweetie. And that's good. It is totally comforting to her. Okay. I that. Yeah, I like that. So a he's lot. on. He's on board oh, with that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's really good. So that's I mean, it's that's mm, great. So, so shout out to Tyler Thompson. Yeah, for, for sure. His, yeah, the Dang. Thompson boys. Yeah, um, good stuff. So yeah, I think I Maybe mean you should get a sponsorship. Right? I, like right. that. I mean, if they want to send a Cadillac over, yeah. here, we certainly won't disagree <laughs> with them. You guys would look good. In a <laughs> I mean, that's the perfect dad mobile. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so I, I was thinking, yeah, I mean, and to, to piggyback off that, I would think something like, I don't know, whatever local meteorologist or something that you want to lean on to show them, hey, look, here's the radar. Here's what so and so says. I mean, and they can't read at this point. So maybe right. I also immediately go to that. Do you guys know that movie Ted? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, that's of course oh, yeah. immediately where I go, where it's oh, him and a teddy bear <laughs> flipping off thunder and in the, laying in the bed together. So that's where well, my brain goes. So I'm of no say, help yeah, here. So, so yeah, teach <laughs> teach my children that. Guys. Yeah, yeah. I am of zero <laughs> help here at all. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but when you're laying in bed and you hear that thunder, you're probably in there going. I mean, I am like, fuck, which which kid is getting up? Sure. Yeah. I mean, sure. That's oh right. Exactly what I'm. Th- I'm like, oh boy, here it comes. Foot here. We gonna hear footsteps? Right. Yeah. And I mean, oh, we haven't started it yet, but last night in particular, because coming. it was so loud, and we've got the noisemaker going in Elsie's room, yeah. so at least yep. to some extent, Same I'm here. like, please, God, don't yeah. hear it. Yep. But she sleeps under a window. I mean, she yep. sleeps near a window. It's like yeah. she's going to hear this shit eventually. So we started to talk about your family a little bit, and I wanted to ask um, you're kind of a first for several things, but you're also our first, like, single divorced dad recently single recently divorced like so I, and through the lens of parenting i just kind of wanted to talk kind of get your impression on mm-hmm. 
how child rearing has changed mm-hmm. or you know what, what kind of conversations you've had with your kids and just kind of pick your brain a little bit about that see what you have to say yeah i mean as anybody can imagine i mean divorce is hard mm-hmm. it really is I mean, it's hard on the, the kids uh <laughs> but they're resilient creatures so sure. i mean they're, they're gonna adjust um and it's a matter of getting on board with your ex-wife or ex-husband whatever it is to to be the adult in the room and like lead them through it right because i mean it is it's it's been a tough process over the last 12 <coughs> months for my kids you know the moves um you know the questions why are mommy and daddy living together i mean because we were married for 10 years blake's nine so i mean she's gone through this with us yeah um it, it's just a matter of approaching it um from the standpoint of hey look I need to I need to be able to like walk my kid through this and, mm-hmm. and tell them it's going to be all right. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, it is just an adjustment for everybody, but they're surprisingly resilient. I mean, sure. They, they get through it, and um, I mean, there's certain rule books that you follow, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, it works out in the end. So. I do like I do like your line though about being the adult in the room. Yeah. Like, like you recognize that you might be going through some shit, but also. Your kids still need a parent, right? Yeah. So, and you've got to be there. You like you said, be that adult in the room. And and that's just, I mean, if you can have two adults in the room, you and your ex, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you hear the horror stories of the divorced parents that like one's bashing the other. But in my situation, you know, I credit to to Mindy. I mean, we co-parent well. Good. Um, so, I mean, that's important. I mean, the kids come first. If you you start out with that, then. And things end well. Sure. Yeah. I, and I do like the kids come first thing too. Right. Yeah, that's, that seems, yeah. I mean. That's what I was going to say. Like that, that can be a situation where you can be so selfish, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and it, uh, it, it's easy to fall into that. Yeah. I, I right. yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, putting the kids first, that's yeah. good for you, man. That's I awesome. I mean, it's, it is what it is. You just got to adapt, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And did, so with your oldest, did you have to have some pretty tough conversations or anything? Like, was, was you asking about it and that yeah. kind of stuff? And um, just starting to, you know. Okay. I wonder. It starts out with confusion. Like, it, it, she shut down because she was a very social, interactive child mm-hmm. with, her, with her parents. Mm-hmm. And there was a shutdown period for, I'd say, the first couple months where I think she was just in no man's land. She didn't yeah. know. She didn't know what was going on. You know, we did it the right way where we kept, like, a home base. Mm -hmm. So the house we were living in, and on we had our parenting plan, and we would cycle through. The kids didn't move. Oh, okay. So they lived in the house. Like, nothing changed for them. But, you know, I stayed at a a buddy's house and his guest's house. She stayed at her brother's Airbnb, and we'd cycle through. So we wanted to make sure that there was some continuity yeah. and how their life was. So it, it really didn't change a whole lot. But then came the move. Like, you know, mom bought a new house, dad bought a new house. We sold the house that they were more or less raised in. Yeah. So there were some changes there. So you got to you got to walk them through that, have a communication line with the significant other. Um, and, I mean, it worked out. And, like, strategically, I mean, I had my strategy. Like, yeah. I mean, you're still trying to... I hate to say this, like get the upper hand. Like, how am I going to make a situation great out of this, right? Mm-hmm. So, my goal was, hey, look, I want my daughter surrounded by my kids, surrounded by other kids. Like, I want them to be in a fun environment, a neighborhood, something they're going to thrive in. That's what I did. So, I just fell into the situation where I moved in this neighborhood, and Blake had, you know, six kids that she went to school with. Cool. Oh, so awesome. it was great. I mean, yeah. It yeah. and she loves it. The, the little kids love it. Um, so. The competitive side of me, is, that's <laughs> yeah, wanting to, to provide for them. Right? Sure, like, sure, sure. Like, hey, look, I, this is what I want for my kids. I, this is what they're telling me they want. Right. And uh, that's what I try to execute on that. I'm gonna, and, I'm gonna make this as good as I can yeah, because absolutely. that's what I want to do. Exactly. Sure. Well, and I, I definitely think there's something to be said for surrounding your kids with other kids. Yeah, absolutely. Because we, this neighborhood, I used to live in this neighborhood when I was a little kid, yeah. and then we moved back here in my 30s, and. It's a bunch of retirees and 30-somethings. And there are a handful of kids in the neighborhood, and I'm excited about that, that it would be fine. But when I was a little kid, it was only retirees. I was the only kid, other than one other house, like a quarter mile away in the entire neighborhood. Right. And so I, I, I like the – I really, really love that you're being conscious about, like, hey, I'm going to find a neighborhood full of kids for our kids to go play in. Well, I mean, what, what, what do we have to fall back on? It's like how we grew up. 
Mm -hmm. Like I grew up with my bike. You know, I'd take off my bike. Oh yeah, I was getting ready to say the biker uh, gang, man. Summer, sorry, you're good. So, in summers, I'm like, you know, I know my parents are worrying, but like our kids are never going to experience that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't care how secluded you are, what kind of environment you're in, our kids are never going to experience what we experience. I agree, right? and I hate that. Yeah, it's awful. Like I, I can never trust my. I'm like, hey, yeah, just ride down to Emily's house, whoever. Right. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> she would get hit coming out of the. You know what I mean? Where mm -hmm. we knew, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut over here. I'm gonna cut over there, and you know, there wasn't that fear factor. They're never gonna experience that. No. It's, it's sad. It's a sad state. I think. Support for this episode is brought to you by Five Pound Apparel. Just in time for Father's Day, we've partnered with Five Pound Apparel to give the listeners of the Decent Dads podcast 15% off their next purchase when they use code Decent Dads 15. That's D E C E N T D A D S 1 5. Thank you, Five Pound Apparel, for supporting local and Decent Dads everywhere. Well, I hinted at it whenever uh, we was doing the introduction that, uh, that you're going to share all the all the secrets and whatnot on how to get your kids to, uh, to brush their teeth and, <laughs> and have good uh, dental hygiene. Um, so, so, you know, I don't know how long you've been a dentist, but uh, you work on kids like Bryant, you know, every, every so often. So <laughs> yeah, you, you, probably, <laughs> you probably got a, a few tips and tricks on how to how to yeah, help our I've kids out. Things up my sleeve. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's honestly with my my kids personally, it's a wrestling match. I mean, for really? a young age. But, and I tell parents that I'm pretty open about that because they'll come in and be like, hey, look, you know, we're sorry. We didn't, uh, you know, we're just. You know, we try to brush. Or we get one, one, you know, morning in here or there. Like, I get it. I have three kids, but it is like with Bo. It's it's a wrestling match to to brush his teeth. It, is it, it really? Like, yeah. Like, I mean, it's a headlight. Like, come on, <laughs> it's all right. You're doing this. Uh, Britt is good. She wants to do it on her own. But it starts from a young age. Like, you know, well, they're getting them chewing on the toothbrush. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're going to grow into it. But the longer you wait, the worse it's going to be. Sure. And Preach. so. Yeah, I mean, it really is. So, it, and it, I guess it's easy for me to say because I'm a dentist, but like even these kids come in, like if you can walk them through it and like, hey, look, you know, chew on it, and it, it, you can get on, you can manipulate their mind to get it done, right? Yeah. But honestly, with both, it was a it was a wrestling match. And <laughs> Brit, to a certain degree, they hate it. I mean, it's not natural to have something jammed down your throat. Yeah. You right. Know? Yeah. <laughs> they don't want that. Uh, but it's in a necessary evil, yeah. as you know. I saw I saw one, and I think it was a dentist, but it was on social media where they had set like their kid's head was in their lap, both kid and dad's feet were all pointed that direction, yeah. and they had their knees up a little bit, and both arms were iron crossed out yeah. under dad's knees, and that was how he had oh, the kid dang. held down <laughs> to brush teeth, and that was a, it was a dentist dad that had had a similar thought process. Yeah, I mean, but uh, like the damage you can do, like the trauma you can inflict on somebody, like a kid. Doing that, especially dental work, like mm. you can, I mean, it can go sideways. Oh, where I bet. When they're our age, it's a bad. I mean, you can't, you can't get in there and do anything. Yeah. Else. So you yeah. gotta be cautious on how you approach yeah. dental care. That's so, so I, I want to talk more about that because I, I have a handful of people in my circle that are, I don't know, if scared is the right word, but are hesitant to go to the dentist. Mm. I had a really good experience with my dentist yeah. forever. And weirdly enough, my hygienist from my entire life now works for you. And the first time mm -hmm. I came to see you, I was like, oh, you're yeah. here. Yeah. And so I just yeah. went right back and jumped back in her chair. But I had such a good experience with Dr. Hurd and, and mm -hmm. Dr. Kaufman and, and some of these and the, and the doctors Barnett, like all these yeah. people that were very good for us. Do you have are there like particular strategies that you like to employ to try to like not traumatize these kids as little kids to try and then have productive dental adults yeah absolutely i mean you have to get them in an early age so i got tons of buddies like hey you know so and so is two years old like what age i'm like well we're a year late here we do a happy really? visit so get them in and it's like we don't charge you mm. we want to make sure they know that it's a friendly environment like we give them a toy we don't have to do a cleaning i mean you're not getting charged anything even if it's three visits like that Hey, this is a fun place. You get mm -hmm. a toy. Like it's a, it's a positive experience. I like that yeah. a lot. And so that's what we do. I yeah. don't do any of like head and lap. I don't do any of that. I've n never had a kid in my lap or mom's lap. Like, okay, we're gonna hold you down and right. uh, you know shove two fingers in there and see sure. what's going on. We just don't do that because, I mean, dental assholes from a young age become dental assholes at an old age. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. just what it is. It makes what sense. It is. I mean, yeah, absolutely. 40 years old, 
they're terrified because they had a bad experience when I was trying to do whatever I was doing at two, right? Yeah. And it, it follows them through life. Yeah. So if you have a bad experience early on, it's going to be tough to do anything on you. At sure. Yeah. yeah. The treasure box, I think, is universal too. Right? Like, <laughs> it is very universal. Yeah. That's the move. Yeah. I, I mean, all of the good dentists that I've had in my life have had a treasure box. Do you, do you still get it? No. Okay. Um, I was getting ready to say, <laughs> like, I'm uh, in my 30s and he stopped wait. giving me the treasure box. So <laughs> I'm throw it out there. I have a funny treasure box story. <laughs> and it's kind of, I don't want to say it's dirty, but. If it is, it is. Yeah. So. My accountant, uh, like they go through all your QuickBooks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there was a reoccurring credit card thing from Rhode Island Novelty, which sounds like a porn shop. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm not, I'm not joking. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. What is? And I went to my (laughs) what is Rhode Island Novelty? And they're like, well, I think it's the toys. I'm not sure, but it was just like a, you know, hundred dollar a month, whatever it was for like the toys. Sure. So, can I say the name? Yeah. Bill Miller calls. He's like, hey man, we just we've been kind of wondering about this for the last couple months. Like, are there certain things you're... I'm like, what are you talking about, Bill? He's like, we got Rhode Island novelty on... I'm like, Bill, I'm going to check into this. So I got... It was. It was like... So it was toys. It was just like slinkies. Yeah. Stuff like Yo-yos, that, that kind of stuff. Running, like... <laughs> Back off right. still doing sales <laughs> out of the <laughs> so I'm like, I get it now. Like, like Rhode Island hustler? Like the grown man? Right, right, right. I'm like... <laughs> So every time I see that, I get a little chuckle at yeah. the Rhode Island. Novelty. That's funny. Yeah, that's I'm gonna funny. have to. I'm gonna have to ask Bill about that. <laughs> oh, that's man. really funny. No. <laughs> we were, yeah, we took Liam to the dentist. Uh, I don't know, probably about a year ago now, and we, that's how we were. We were, we were terrified because this kid, uh, he's terrified to go to the barber to get his hair cut. Yeah, because he had a terrible experience that first time. Right, got his ear nipped. Yeah, first time like he goes the, to the barber, yeah. they nipped his ear. And like the whole back of his ear was just bad. <gasps> um, but uh, but yeah, they they were super good, and they like let him hold all the instruments instruments and then um like the drills and stuff they let him put it like yeah. on, his, on his finger and stuff so he could feel it and it tickled to him so he thought it was funny right, right. and he loved it he loved it and he's even asked us about it since then because he knows like where it's at and so he'll be like hey you know when do we get to go back there and so um perfect yeah so we were terrified and as far as like brushing teeth we just we bribe them i'm gonna be honest we yeah yeah i yeah. don't hate that we yeah. they, no. they love their gummies so we tell them hey you gotta you gotta brush your teeth before you can get your vitamin gummies, and uh, and they're like, <laughs> okay, and they do it. That works. And, uh, yeah. So, so well, that's what I, works for us. so I am glad to hear that the wrestling match is still the move yeah. <laughs> because I I was doing the wrestling match, but hadn't actually admitted it out loud to anybody because I was scared I was doing something this wrong. Is a safe but. space, Brian. You can, you can <laughs> tell. So bad. I mean, like a little headlock and like that's get in there. Pretty much what I'm I doing. Mean, you got to do it. Yeah, but they're not going to remember. Well, and it's and, and I'm trying to make a game out of. It. I'm counting, so it's one, uh, two, yeah. and then and then I'm going back. Okay, let's start one again. Yeah. One, yeah. and so it's like trying to make a game out of it because gamify any of this stuff with the kids. Right? Yeah, makes it that they're much all better. For it. But. For sure. Well, I just thanks, man. I just we wanted to ask about the dental thing because we can't have a doctor in the house and not talk about it. Right. So we asked ahead of time for some things that you wanted to talk yeah. about, and you had a handful of quotes or like guidelines or like or like yeah. yeah, they're actually really really good. So we, we yeah. kind of just want to talk about them. Tell us like I'm trying to think. I don't I didn't write them down on my form, but like let your kids make as many decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So know, so tell us about that. Give us that one. Yeah. I, it, it's just been kind of a, a general rule that, and this was something that like my dad gave me. I, I, I felt from my dad and my parents, they let my brother and I uh, make a lot of decisions that are own. Not, nothing like life changing, sure. right? I mean, we got to operate the sound mind here, but we got to make a lot of decisions on our own. Whether it be like, hey, look, I, I want to play soccer. I don't want to play soccer. Like they never forced us to do anything, whether it meant failure or not. And cool. we picked up on that. He never like, hey, look, I'm going to make you make your decisions, and you know, you know, you got to live with it. It wasn't like that. I mean, it was palpable that w- we understood that. Hey, look, yeah, we we had some autonomy with that is what cool. was going on in our life, and uh, that always resonated with me. And um, you know, I, I want my my kids to do that because I don't think a lot of kids get that anymore. Right. You know, I mean. Sure. Parents are guiding them, which I think they should to a certain degree. But I try to let my kids at their appropriate level. Like my daughter is nine, so she can make higher level decisions than my four-year-old, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
But if he can, can pick out sock colors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, 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 you know, to that point, like I let Britain, she is adamant. Like I want to pick out my clothes. Okay, great. Here's the deal. I'm going to make two out of the three days. I pick the clothes. I'll give you a day. You yeah. make your own decision. Right, love like, it. You know. Um, but yeah. And is that like like crazy? Off the wall outfits, pretty no, good sometimes, or she's, she she's pretty good. Nice, okay. Yeah, I just pretty I like she's girly, girly. I mean, she sure. she knows matching and things like that. At Perfect. This point. But um, that's fun though. Yeah, you know, to a certain degree, like with failure. I mean, Blake, you push the envelope. You know, I, I'll like homework, for example. She'll bring it up to the last day. She'll be like, I don't want to do homework tonight. I'm like, all right, well, hey, look, you know, you got to understand that you're gonna have to do two extra pages of math ten, next tomorrow night, right? Right. And just as long as you know the consequences and that you get less of whatever playtime outside, it's tough when you're doing an hour and a half of homework the next night, supposed to a half hour, right? Right. And I, I think in the end they're gonna, it's gonna help. Yeah. Well, and you, I mean, you learn from the decisions, like right? Terrence said. Well, that's why I was, I was yeah. just getting ready to say that same thing. We've had like two different dads recently talk about consequences and, <laughs> yeah. and letting the kids make their own decisions, and it's like, yeah, I mean, you can do this if you want to, but it's going to be worse tomorrow. It's going to suck tomorrow, and so yeah, I think teaching them that at a young age is is huge. Um, and too, I mean, selfishly, it, it prevents some tantrums too, because that like my three year old. That was a big battle uh, used to be was putting clothes on, right? Because we'd pick out his clothes and be like, yeah, you got to wear this. And so now, you know, we pick out two or three shirts. Let him make the decision. Which what do you, what do you he wants to wear? wear. Cuz you don't really care what t-shirt he has on. No. So why not let him no. pick? And so sure. and uh yeah, and he's fine. And it's it works good now. And now it's not even a tantrum where we pick out his clothes, you know? So yeah. that that worked out pretty well. We're we're starting to get into that. And I've got a feeling that Elsie's going to be similar to to your daughter, the girly girl side <laughs> of things cuz like at not even 2, she's already fighting me on like what clothes she has on and stuff. Uh, like, give me a yeah, freaking you're break, right. kid. You're about to be in a thick. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be aggressive. Yeah, what yeah. about uh you had a you had another uh, you know short and sweet one here. You know, you said say little but do more. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you know, we touched on it earlier the the divorce aspect and of course when I was going through it you know, I had my friends up who had been through that similar experience, and one of my buddies, Adam Lotes, the best advice he got, so I can't say that he was the one to get I mean, he gave it to me, but sure. he said, hey, look, say little, do more, and that's all I can say. Mm. And I, I don't know, I thought about that for a little bit, and it made complete sense. Um, I mean, you go a million different directions with that advice, but yeah, I do. I like I. I you try to step up and and do what you say, um, and, and just don't say a ton. And if, if you're doing all the right things, it mm-hmm. goes a lot further. I could learn well, from that. And we've talked about that again quite a bit on, sure. on here. You know, as kids at a certain age, right? Especially young age, they pick up on so much more of what you do as opposed to what yeah. you say, right? Because mm-hmm. it goes in one ear, out the other. But you know, if you're doing X, Y, and Z. Yep. They notice it, you know, yeah. and they, they, they imitate it, too, to a yeah. certain extent, right? Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's just like what you said either, earlier, too. It's like you don't want to, you know, you're not trying to badmouth anybody or anything. You're just no. going to show them that, hey, I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to love on you, and that's right. what I'm here to do. Yeah, and, and that's exactly it. But, I mean, when you split, I mean, the golden rule is like you're not supposed to – you can't bash the other party, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that's yeah. just – you don't do that. Um, so I, I think the point with what Adam was saying is – if you're saying less, there's less chance for you making a mistake of saying, hey, mm. look, mom sucks or yeah, uh, right, right. You know, whatever the case may be. And if you're out playing with the kids or, I mean, you do less laundry or you're doing less around that. I mean, you're going to have to give up things that you probably need to be doing, grocery shopping, whatever it takes to be doing more with your kids. Mm-hmm. And way into that. Do, let's do more. For sure. Part of it. I, like I do that. like yeah. to say little do more because again we too. like little short consumable yep. things yeah. like that and we found a couple of them that we really really like like yeah, that yeah. that one's a solid one yeah. and then the last one that we did you had on there was that not everyone will like you and you won't like everyone you meet so make the effort right so that one was it's a bullying aspect so I mean we, we hear a lot about that and my nine year old daughter is come, I mean, she goes to Catholic school but the whole bullying epidemic is right in our face right now mm-hmm. and I don't I, I never experienced that I don't know how you guys did when you were younger it, bullying wasn't a thing 
per se. I, mean, I was I was waiting to, for you to explain further. Bowling is super popular. Bullying. Bullying. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I heard yeah. bowling and I'm like, what? Sorry, Are we yeah. into the ten pins now? <laughs> Got it. Sorry, I misunderstood what yeah, you were saying. The, Thank so you. So the seven ten split. <laughs> is kind of a. It's like shit. What is no, he talking sure. about? <laughs> Got Bull, it. Bullying. Understood. Yeah, Understood. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So she came home one day and said, "Hey, look, you know, so and so has. I, I feel like I'm being bullied." And she was more emotional. It was more drama than it was serious, right? Mm-hmm. And so I hit up my buddy Ryan Schutte, who's you know, he's got three kids of his own, twin daughters, an older son. I said, "Hey, man, I, like Blake has come home with this a couple times. I mean, how have you approached this?" And like, he's from St. Louis, we grew up together since we were fourteen. We've been through this, like you know, the jerks that you went through with high school, right? Yep. Um, and you can't you can't treat it like when we were kids. Like, okay, hey, look, you know, smack him in the mouth. <laughs> right. you know? Sure. Yeah. And so he he told his kids, he's like, look, I won't name their names, but he's like, you know, you're not gonna like everybody, and they're not gonna like you. I sure. mean, you're just gonna, that's something you're gonna have to get past. Right. And uh, I don't know, really, it hit home with me, and so that's what I explained to Black. I was like, look, you don't have to like everybody. I mean, just you can't. That's not gonna happen. And they're not going to like you, so you're going to have to get over that. And so if they're bullying you, you either ignore it or you do something about it, which I'm not opposed to. Right. I mean, if mm-hmm. it gets to a certain point. Sure. And, um, you know, if dad has to get involved with the principal, whatever, I'm not advocating any sort of violence or anything. But sure. But comes a point where you had to stick up for yourself. Mm-hmm. But it starts Absolutely. at, uh, you know, you don't have to like everybody, and they're mm-hmm. not going to like you. So you just, if you know that. And I think you're on a level playing field with everybody. Good. Yeah, cool. So, how did she did she take that advice and run with it? Has it gotten better? Yeah, it has absolutely gotten better. Um, I think it made her feel good that I don't know. This is it's going to be weird to say that she didn't have to like. I mean, she didn't have to acknowledge like I have to be nice to so and so that was being mean to me. Mm-hmm. Because we, we, we push because you've got a sweetheart like, of a kid. You have That's to, great. You have to be nice. Like at all costs, you have to be nice. I'm just not. That's not my. Thing. Like that's not my thing. I mean, if you, you give them the chance, but if they're not reciprocating, you don't have to like them. That's yeah, right. that's their they, problem, they, not yours. Walk away, do whatever you got to do, but you don't have to acknowledge them. You don't have to like them at all. Right. But know that on the other end, they don't have to like right. you for whatever reason. If if you've been mean to them, or even if you're nice to them, and they just don't like your hair. They're not. If they don't like you. It is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, don't you don't don't lose your sleep over it. No. That's a them problem, not a you problem. Exactly, right. yeah, that goes in the two fucking bad column. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that doesn't. You can't change that, so right. why worry about it? Yeah. Well, and I, and the bullying thing is something that I'm because I am I, I have seen that that is definitely more of a thing, way more than it seemed like it was when we were kids. Yeah. Um, trying to be aware of how I'm going to approach that because that's something we've talked about on the right. show before that like. I need to have thoughts about situations before my kids get into them because if yeah. I if my initial gut reaction to something is allowed to be the reaction that I have it's going to be fire and brimstone and it's going to be a problem right. because I know how my my brain works and it's especially when it comes to my kid yeah. and so it is good to have these kind of conversations ahead mm-hmm. of time and and talk to some of your peers talk to some of your pals and go okay what you guys do? How'd you handle this? Because I'm gonna go punch a kid, right. and, yeah. and like that's not gonna work for anybody. I'm gonna end up in jail. Yeah, yeah. And I think bullying is just a little bit different now than mm-hmm. when we were kids, right? Because you're talking about, you know, yeah, when we were kids, you know, we could just yeah punch him in the face if it's that big a deal, right? <laughs> it was, but, but was it was because like it was just people punching people in the face, or like, or I think kids are sensitive now, and right. I, I that that's my daughter. She's more sensitive, so it's sure. like okay. You know, I want to be like, hey, look, you know, toughen up a little bit. And you can't, right? I well, don't think. That, that, yeah, it's not productive. I mean, you could yeah. you could say that to your kid; it's not going to help not them any, help. right? Yeah, but that too, and also, you know, now kids either get bullied in person, but also too, you know, you got the keyboard warriors that are, you know, bullying them over social media or whatnot. So I don't know Blake's yeah, situation yeah. if if it was, you know. I don't even know if she has a cell phone or not, but uh, but that was a big thing that I saw in the news the other day that, you know, that's where the majority of kids are getting bullied is, you know, via social media and whatnot. And it's like you can't have that instant reaction in that sure. case, right, or, or respond immediately. Um, and if, if you do, it's, you know, it's not the same as whenever it's in person, right? So 
Uh, man, that's a good topic. I didn't even know he was going to talk about that. Well, today. So, so, yeah. so let's let's drill into that a little yeah. further. So, like, have you guys had any conversations about like when we're doing cell phones, when we're doing social media, when we're doing some of this stuff that we didn't have necessarily as kids? Yeah, and we are. Um, so just again, here we go back into the divorce thing. Like, Blake needs a way of communication. So she's at yeah. the, she's at the barn, you know, with the horror. I mean, wherever she's at. Like, I've turned everything off. She doesn't have access to social media. She can call me, Mom, Papa. She can call Jim and Hannah. She can call Mommy, Daddy, Uncle Matt, you know. A couple of people, fans, right. right? But, but, it's, she, but she, it's a glorified flip phone. She's got an iPhone. Got it. She's got an iPhone. No internet. So, like, we have this thing on lockdown. And so at 7 o'clock when she gets home from the stable, it's on. It's it's with me. Like, she doesn't get it. There's Good. no, like, hey, I'm yeah. texting. So, and many and I agreed, like, hey, look, this is a convenience for her. It's a convenience for us. But that's where it's got to stay. Um, but, yeah, but she's going to get that access probably soon enough, right? She's right. nine. So in 10, 11, these kids are going to be getting it, and they're going to figure out how to get on Facebook They're to flip the Wi-Fi on and do it behind my back. And, you know, I mean, right. sure. so we're going to have to be more vigilant. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, she's got an iPhone. Yeah, I get it. Well, <laughs> Facebook became a thing when I was in high school. Yep. So that's yep. I'm, I'm in that generation, 34. Yep. So Facebook became a thing, like, right when I was in high school. So the fledgling days of, like, I was gonna say, the but first it, social media. Yeah, it wasn't near as big then as it is now. No, right? no, 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 no. And, and yeah. it was literally, I mean, not the original social media because MySpace and other things existed. Right. But, like, that was the first, at least for our age group, social media thing yeah. that we interacted mm-hmm. on and my parents had no freaking clue what was going on on there what kind of frankly what kind of words were being used on yeah. there and what kind of conversations <laughs> were being had because we all thought it was anonymous uh, it's definitely not it's still out there oh 15 gosh. years later facebook memories but like yeah dude, it's bad but <laughs> i i wonder elsie's two so give it a decade what's going to be the social media of the time mm-hmm. in a decade or will social media still be a thing at that point? It, who freaking knows? It, but it, who does know? Uh, but it go to the social media point. It hits harder when something is like <clears throat> if I call you something over social media, like I put on your page, like "Hey, Brian's an asshole." Mm-hmm. It hits harder than me saying, "Hey, man, you're an asshole." You know, like yeah. just me and you because it's right. me because and you talking. As because opposed every, to every- everybody can see it, and that's what scares me the most yep. mm-hmm. is that when it gets to that point and I, th- I i think that's a big part of what's going on with these young kids now i mean the mental health thing is because everybody's so driven and we we can sit here and talk for three hours on this but, right yeah and that's why we've shielded her from that and i will try to shield her from that for as long as i can Good eventually for you. i have no control right right so but yeah, at yeah. a certain point it's kind of it, it becomes very similar to like the Facebook yeah. thing I was just talking about. It's impossible. Yeah. You, it's you, impossible. you can't know everything right. as a parent. Like as much as I would like to know everything, and I'm a helicopter parent in training right now, right. I, yep. I, I know yeah. that's just not quite possible. Yep. Me and Allie, like I said, we saw that on the news uh, this morning, and then we started having that same conversation. It's like, well, shoot, yeah, when do we get the boys? So, I mean, obviously we're not we're close to getting them cell phones right now, but it's like, what I age? I know what I'm getting Liam for Christmas. What age do you, do you get that? And then it's like, yeah. Little <laughs> iPhone. Yeah, right? No, better not. But he's first, I'm getting him a dog. I mean, and an iPhone. He already knows how to use mine. It's just sad. No, no, no. Neither one. Derek's a f- You're not Derek welcome. is firmly in the don't. I don't want pets in my house camp. No pets for you, huh? None whatsoever. And no. So, yeah. Well, no. I mean, a goldfish. I, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, like, I'm cold fish. Yeah. There's not much uh, maintenance sorry, there. To keep sorry up. About that. Don't but, get fish. Let yeah. Me tell you. I mean, they're just. <laughs> no, my wife is dogs. very anti-pet. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. I'm not anti-pet, but right now it's like we're so busy. You I don't need less. I don't need more for sure. Right. Do you guys had any like weird pets? Yeah, I was so good. <laughs> I was, yes, oh, yes, I want to talk about this yeah, yeah. so much. I want to talk about this. <laughs> so, you, you know, we, we lived on number five at Hickory. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a golf guy. And so we got our first lab, a yellow lab. I'm a yellow lab guy. So we got this yellow lab from Minnesota, like duck dog, uh, big old blockhead, uh, named him Arnold Palmer. Just okay. Arnie for short. I love it. 
This awesome. So we had him for six months. I mean, he was a complete animal. Like we had like copper downspouts. He was ripping downspouts off. He was doing walls. Oh, like, we were shit. trying every. We had him trained. Like we're dubbing Tabasco on the the the, the sheetrock because mm-hmm. he was eating sheetrock. And finally, Mindy and I were Holy like, crap. we need to get we need to get him a, like a brother or a buddy or something. something. Yeah. So we we did same outfit. Like we ordered another dog, Jack. So Jack yeah. Nicholas. So mm-hmm. Arnie, we had Arnie and Jack, and he calmed down. It was the best thing. So first vet appointment, Jack, Mindy goes and gets him from St. Louis, picks him up at the airport, brings him. He's a puppy, and it's just so cute. Take him to the first vet appointment. We come in, and like they have it written on the the whiteboard there, like Jack and Arnie. And so they come over last year. Uh, yeah, we need uh, Jack, Jack Hoff, and Arnie. Hoff. I'm like. Like, so <laughs> Jack Hoff. Jack oh Hoff. no! I call me. I'm like, are you out of your mind? She's like, I just told him it was Jack Nicholas. <laughs> and yeah, so they like it says Jack Hoff on the the white. Yeah. How did she announce it? I'm like, is this some sort of? Joke? Yeah, they're like, what asshole like, names are done? Yes. <laughs> so I get in there. And I ask, and I'm Holy like, Did shit, you guys have to do oh. that? We're in like we're in a waiting room for a people, and you announce Jack Hoff over the. <laughs> Like, and it clearly, I mean, it says on his chart, Jack Nicholas, but I mean, they're the two best dogs, and one ended up down. We saw, well, Blake has Jack, mm-hmm. but Arnie's gone. But uh, it, I mean, it's Jack hysterical. Hoff. That's uh, well, that's that's man, my new yeah. favorite. That's my new favorite right? do- animal Jack name I've Hoff, ever heard. Yeah. That's hilarious. Do you guys? Did you guys? Your kids do any like the gerbils or the snakes yep. or the mm-hmm. lizards or fish. any of that kind of we stuff? We have fish right now. Okay, like, mm-hmm. at my house we have fish. Loves them. Um, they're kind of a little bit of work. Oh, sure. I, yeah. I had one yeah. as a kid, yeah. Yeah, the tanks. The tanks. Uh, yeah. The algae okay, and okay, stuff okay, like okay. that yeah. and the, the chemistry of it. Mm-hmm. And if they die, God forbid, I mean, it's a meltdown. Sure. Uh, everyone is her favorite fish. <laughs> of yeah. course. It's, it is what it is. So. Well, Liv, she is a lover of all animals. That's my yeah. wife's entire family. And so, like... There was talk about well maybe we should get her a gerbil I'm like fuck, no, no absolutely don't do not. that my sister had one growing up they don't reek do yeah, I don't do want that shit in my house and also and they bite speaking of biting I don't want snakes in my house either because <laughs> no. like my I, don't be that guy my <laughs> one of my coworkers her his uh, her son is is in, uh, dating a gal that is an animal person and they've got three dogs and they've got four cats and she was talking about bringing a snake into the house I'm just like. At, at what point do you just yeah. stop? Like, at, at, the girls at our office give me shit because I'm wrapped around Elsie's. Excuse me, Elsie has me wrapped around right. her finger, and she's, well, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get a cat in my ass. As soon right. as Elsie says I want a cat, you're, you're gonna not get gonna her tell one. Tell that baby no. Yeah. No, I'm really not, <laughs> and especially if she says something about anything with scales on it, uh, not no. doing it. Yeah, definitely not. Did you guys have? pets or anything growing uh, up anything like that that was the thing like i mean i grew up on a farm so we didn't have any like indoor pets so i said my sister she had a gerbil yeah growing up that was terrible yeah stunk why, why uh, wrote it? i just don't get I, I don't see the fascination right yeah, nor do or I. like you said the scales like no yeah. why would what? you have a snake yeah i just don't get it like yeah, it's yeah, not it's, for it's, me it's not like, certainly it's, not for me well it's not like a dog that's affectionate and you can be play with right mm-hmm. i mean that's just walk around with it in your <laughs> hand i guess yeah, I don't really... that's creepy don't don't be that guy uh kind of the last unofficial segment that we ask everybody is uh is you know share some of your funny stories with us and i know you were kind of hinting at some of them uh just a minute ago with uh with your, your that involve your pets yeah i mean uh, i go go on and on with, uh, <laughs> feel free with, with pet, yeah with, with, with pets and my kids but so, uh, leaning on the labs, I mean, they were not great. I mean, they were the best dogs, but they're also, I mean, they're just awful dogs, right? <laughs> so, Blake and I, uh, they were her dogs, and she was like, oh, we got to discipline them. Because then that's what we do. I mean, there's always a punishment for whatever they did, like they're putting their nose in mud or whatever. So, she's like, you know, she came up with it. We need to shoot him, which was horror. I don't know how she came up with it. We need to shoot him. I was like, sweetie, we can't just shoot our dog. I mean, not, not, she didn't mean it in that sense, but we had Nerf guns. She was like, well, uh, if we shoot him, maybe that'll just Okay, I don't okay. Know how she made the connection. And so I, I hunt, so we would watch these shows like Lee and Tiffany Lukoski, you know, they're whispering in trees and stuff like that. And she's like, well, we should do what they do. And we'll, like, we'll hunt. Oh, we'll that's have, funny. Check. So. 
we would get these Nerf guns and, you know, she put on a cowboy hat and would like, I'd video it. Like, All right. You know, here we are. We're at, uh, you know, 950 South Augusta. And, you know, <laughs> what, what are we doing today, Blake? And she's like, we're hunting labs. Like, what are their names? She's like, well, Arnie and Jack, we're hunting, we're hunting the dogs, you know? And I said, well, what do they do? Why are we hunting them? And she would, you know, she's like, well, you know, they ate the downspout or whatever. Like, <laughs> right. shit, mom's bad, whatever. And so we would do this whole deal. And it was, it was funny. Like, you're whispering, like, oh, we're going to sneak up on them. And she would, like, she'd sneak out around the corner. But the dogs were smart enough. Like, they got it. So, like, I don't even peek his head out of the corner. Like, she's, like, firing off shots at them. <laughs> and, I mean, they knew that they were in trouble because she would yell at them and she would discipline them. But it was just her way of, instilling discipline on the yeah, dog yeah. which didn't work at all oh but that's, that's so still fun so fun yeah, right God, how much fun was that yeah. though? and i have these on like just iphone videos it was crazy it was so fun that's love that awesome yeah, so i look back on them and she's like yeah you know and name out the guns like yeah oh, it's the x500 nerf gun <laughs> It's like they're doing these videos. It was funny though. And you'll be able to give those to her like later in life yeah. too, and yeah. she'll get a huge kick out of yeah. that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. For sure. I love that. So cool. yeah. That's great. Well. So let's let's get to everybody's favorite part of the episode. What's everybody's favorite part? Dad joke of the week. Ah, yes. um, so, Doc, tell me, tell me a dad joke. Um, is that really a dad joke? This is a Uncle Matt joke. So my brother was. We like Uncle yeah, jokes yeah, in this yeah, show. Yeah, Uncle Uncle jokes, told to my son, um, and he repeated it to me. So, uh oh, Bo, yeah, Bo oh, Matt to told it to Bo. Matt told it okay. to Bo. Okay. Uh, I love it. When he was in town, and he's like, I hey, go tell your dad this joke. So, Bo comes over to me, and he says, Hey, hey, dad, why, why do ducks have feathers? And uh, I said, I don't know, Bo, uh, to cover up your butt quack. Yes. <laughs> And I don't know. This, this is the one that stuck with me. Like he's told it to oh, my, my that's solid. ex-father-in-law. Like, yeah. and it's just one of those hysterical jokes. I'm just like, especially. Why would you tell him that? Yeah, no, yeah. What's you, wrong with you? Like, but also, it's hilarious to hear that coming out of a little yeah, kid's mouth. Right. I'm a five-year-old. Why, why do ducks have feather? You know. Like, just like laugh, yeah, it's like, the kind of joke that's actually pretty funny, yeah, but it's, it's like, damn yeah. it, why does my kid know this joke? Exactly. That's, so that's it's funny. it's one of those jokes that every time Uncle Matt comes in, which is a couple times a year. Hey, why do ducks have feathers? I love just, it. It's a great. Job. That's perfect. So love it, love it. You guys, you guys know I'm an insurance agent. Um, I had an insured hit a light post the other day. Backed into it. Hmm. Um, had to file a claim and everything. Um, fortunately, he only sustained light injuries. Good for him. That's as funny as we're going to get on this show, folks. Gosh. That's as close as we're going to get. Gosh. Boy, that kind of Only sustained like light injuries. It's like, really? Some that's, of his jokes are real good. That one was uh, even so, better. Thank you. I, mean, I appreciate very, that. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got, uh, smartass? Got what do you got? Yeah. Well, I got Let's one. Actually, I got one for, actually for Tom. All right. Uh, I like what? this. Maybe, Going. He, maybe he's heard it before. Maybe not. And maybe maybe he's received one of these. I don't know. But, Tom, what award did the dentist receive? Oh, boy. Went pointed. What is it? Mm. I don't know. A little plaque. <laughs> A little plaque. Uh, I'll tell you, you add that one to the Friday yeah, at the I, staff I, meeting. I, That's I'm the going, Friday yeah. staff meeting joke I, there. I think it's a Monday morning. <laughs> like, Get the people going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. A little celebration. Uh, there you go. That's great. There you go. Well, that's a good way to end it. Three lame ass dad. Well, actually, one good one and two lame ass yeah, dad jokes. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. The, uh, the butt quacks. <laughs> the butt, the butt <laughs> quacks Sorry. actually really good. I like that a lot. So uh, we do have to say thanks to everybody out there on social media for doing all the Absolutely. liking, the sharing, and the subscribing. Um, feel free to do more of that. I think at time of recording on YouTube, we're at thirteen hundred and fifty plus Heck subscribers. Yeah, so we are. That's uh, that was kind of fun. I mean, we're having a good time, and and we hope you are too. And and uh, so. Again, Again, make sure to do all the liking, sharing, and subscribing. That helps us out, and also it lets us get some feedback from you. So give us some comments. Give us your dad jokes, your dad hacks, all those things. So um, I really just have to say thanks. Nice work, decent yeah. dad. Thank well you, done, guys. Tom. Thanks for having me on. Well done, buddy. Love this. Nice work, you guys are doing good stuff. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate Thank you, that. So unless anybody else has anything else. I got nothing. Perfect. We'll see you next time.
artist. That's because he's CEO and like he didn't, you know. She's behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> She's running shit. He's just out in front. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I know how that yeah. goes. Yeah, I got one of those. I'm gonna take that as you're telling me I need to go get more pedicure so I'm right? my feet. Oh, dude, I can't. Yeah.